Thank you. Sit down. Okay. Start. Yes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Sierra Hanks from Atherton High School, and I'd like to discuss compassion with all of you. I've noticed a rather troubling modern movement to look down on compassion, to call compassionate people naive, or to resign the word to the bleeding hearts who we then toss away as idealistic. We're old enough. We've seen the atrocious things people do to each other. It seems so much safer to be a cynic. To believe in human compassion makes us feel like foolish children. It scares us. And how terrible that empathy is seen as childish while cynicism seems the safer path? At times, I must admit, I too have hardened my heart in protection. But I still believe in a compassionate future for our world. And that future begins with all of us. We aren't foolish for caring. We're human. And compassion is part of being human. Buddhists and Jews attribute this to the singularity or oneness of our existence. Christians have a compassionate example in Jesus. Muslims learn through the fasting of Ramadan to empathize with the often constant hunger pangs of others. But beyond that, at the biological human level, we are compassionate. Scientists have found through the study of oxytocin in the brain that we're hardwired to be. In respect to context, there's a common misconception that since Buddhism accepts that reality in reality, there is suffering, and isolation aids in the reaching of enlightenment, that Buddhism doesn't promote interpersonal compassion. I've found this to be false. In traditional and modern Buddhist thought, the only thing higher than pursuing one's own enlightenment is helping another on their path to enlightenment. It can be simply said that shared suffering is lessened, while shared joy increased. And so, this is my challenge to you, my friends. Don't be ashamed of being compassionate. Strive to help others reach their full potential on your path to realizing your own. Thank you. Wonderful. Can I give you a hug? Hmm? Can I give okay. you a hug? <laughs> Thank you. I think I prefer. There's another one. Talk by stand. <clears throat> I appreciate whether your or today a comment uh, excellent. Uh, Uh, it is very true. Some, sometimes the people, firstly, uh, the concept sort of warm-heartedness or compassion, forgiveness, you see, these things uh, consider uh, part of religious practice. So those people who have not much interest about religion, even you see those people who are supposed to believe, but not, not seriously implement what they believe. Then you see these usually you see neglect about practice of these things. Uh, so these, of course, all religious tradition carry the practice of these things and also use philosophical sort of, how should say, backing. Mm. Uh, however, these practice, these things are actually biologically 
We need these things. Firstly, we born from our mother. At the initial sort of few years, we can't stand it. Or we can't sort of we can't sort of look after oneself. Entirely depend on others' affection or other sort of care. Even animals like that. So mentally, emotionally, we equipped by biological factor. This is some kind of uh, cherishing way, or love, or affection. So that's our way. Our life start that way. I think here, you see those children uh, who have, uh, who received, I think, uh, the maximum affection from their mother. I think today, such people have deep insight, uh, more sort of strength, more self-confidence, and ready to show affection to other. Then those people who receive less affection from our mother or from our friend, and sometimes neglect child, just give food, not, nothing. Such a, a people who experience in early period that kind of thing, or worst thing, bully, abuse. Then these people, no matter how successful, but in deep insight, some sense of insecurity, sense of fear, that automatically brings some kind of distrust to other people. Uh, so, uh, very difficult to find trusted friend. Finally, become lonely person, lonely as well. In, in mental level, lonely. And then depression. Then their best sort of friend is alcohol or drug. <laughs> Since you see, uh, nobody they can trust. So only perhaps I think some pets, dogs, or cats. And then the bottle of alcohol. And eventually ruined their own physical. Very clear. Uh, then, uh, so therefore, we should not consider these values as something uh, religious sort of uh, values uh, who have no interest about religion because uh, of the neglect about these things is totally wrong. Then, another thing, uh, practice compassion is good for practitioner himself or herself, but not necessarily, you see, helping other. That also a great mistake. I think firstly, my own sort of story. Uh, my mother, farmer, uh, illiterate, uh, uneducation, uneducated, poor, uh, poor sort of the mother of the farm, farming sort of city family, but very warm-hearted person. So when I was young, I was the youngest child, so I received at that time I received the maximum sort of city affection from my mother. Perhaps some of my uh, elder brothers, sisters may have some jealousy, maybe. <laughs> so, so in any way, uh, so dear to me, right, my mother, uh, very kind. And then myself also is very, very dear, my mother. So as is a religious sort of children, ch child, no sort of Toys or these things, of course, because I should have a chance. Video games. Video games, these things, <laughs> not there. So, uh, 
daytime I carry uh, by my mother on her shoulder and when she sort of farming work, work in, the, in farm land. Now, you see, she worked that way. She always carried me. So then, uh, when go different places, and I hold, I hold, you see, my mother's two ear. Hmm? <laughs> I want to go this side. I do this. <laughs> if I want to go this side, go like that. <laughs> If my, if my mother uh, didn't listen my wish, then I shot. And then called bang, 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 re. My leg, no, my leg, uh, kick, kick uh, uh, on my mother, like that. So I'm quite sure. Uh, later, uh, through training, uh, the training about compassion, these things, I found, I found very easy because I feel the real seed of compassion uh, cultivated by my mother. Clear. So these are biological effects. Clear. That's one thing. Then, uh, uh, the practitioner, of course, as soon as so, so the uh, inner sort of warm feeling here, mainly, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> you should say, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes uh, in the room, air condition, sometimes you see bad for a nose like that. Mm. <clears throat> uh, so, the, of course, the practitioner himself, herself, you see, as soon as some kind of warm feeling of other and concern of others well being there, that uh, automatically reduce the desire to harming other or desire to exploit other, desire to or say the cheating other. Because you respect them. You, you, you actually voluntarily take concern of their well-being. As a result, your trust with respect automatically comes. So that brings inner strength, self-confidence. Reduce fear. Such practitioner, no possible loneliness feeling. Rest of uh, community. I always telling seven billion human beings are actually human brothers sisters. I always telling people. I myself also the practice oneness of humanity. So everywhere, new place. It's the first time meeting, but I feel, oh, another human being. No differences. So with that kind of attitude, uh, I myself used to get immense sort of, as they benefit. And then others also. See, obviously, others also human being. Uh, if you show them sincere feeling, honest, open. They also, even I met a number of cases, some people at the initially, a little bit reserved, remain a little bit distance. And I always see dealing with these people as a human brother, sisters, no formality, no sort of distance feeling. So within a few minutes, then their attitude also change. So result, they also become much happier. Uh, so that's the way to create happy community, happy family. So once individual seriously sort of carry these sort of value, 
then it automatically creates different sort of friendly atmosphere within the family, within the community. So therefore, uh, uh, the as a result of because of one individual practice, it certainly, you see, eventually get benefit to others also. Then, it is true, you see, some people you see, who just think about money without thinking this inner value, without knowing the inner peace, then more aggressive, uh, more tough person. Sometimes we feel, oh, very able person, compassionate, consider weak. This is totally wrong. Actually, practice, I mean, person who practice compassion, practice forgiveness, is actually much more inner strength. People who act aggressively and anger is a sign of weakness. When anger, how anger develop? Feel some threat. You feel some anxiety, so the sense of yourself weak. So then you see, it seems some threat. Then anger come. And then aggressive sort of violent sort of attitude come. So that's totally a sign of weakness. I think a true person, when we have some kind of argument, heated argument, the one person who have plenty of reason, usually less sort of, less sort of possible to develop anger. The other person who have not much sort of sound basis about his or her argument, then sometimes you see easier develop anger like that. So compassion is a sign of strength. Anger is signs of weakness. Then, then here you see you have to make a distinction, affection to the person. Now here I'm, we are talking is uh, not compassion or affection on purely biological factor. That is seed of our compassion. But then, the use of intelligence, uh, then further strengthening that compassion. Now here is the two differences. The first level of compassion, of affection, out of sort of biological factor, that's very much oriented about other, other sort of action, other appearances. When I look at you, uh, in spite of my smile, or sort of a serious sort of attitude, if you still look <laughs> like that, <laughs> then you see the, or see the uh, biologic, biological factor of compassion, then much depend on others' attitude, others' appearances, and some difficulties. But the second level of compassion uh, further developed with help of human intelligence. Then, if the other one looks a little sort of, a, sort of negative attitude, but won't, won't change, you see, your compassionate attitude, because that trained compassion, compassion based on reason, that compassion not oriented others' attitude or appearances, but oriented the being himself or herself. So now, enemy. As far as the attitude is concerned, negative to you. Uh, but still, uh, they are basically human beings. They also like ourselves, want happy life. And they also have every right to overcome suffering, including overcome 
anger. Anger means some kind of suffering of emotion. So therefore, uh, on that level, uh, on human level, you see, even you, you, Kasota, you, Kasota, uh, your sort of compassionate feeling or sense of concern is even increasing towards enemy. You see, they also, you see, same human being, do not want suffering, but they become slave of anger. As a result, they not only harming other people, but also, you see, lose their own peace of mind. So we have sufficient reasons to feel concern about them. So, that, so now here, two levels. Affection, mainly based on other attitude. Or sense of concern, not on that, but being because of himself or herself, personal level. So now here, make distinction. Action and actor. Now, actor is concerned as a human brother sisters. You must give affection, compassion. Now, action is concerned if the circumstance is such it's necessary to take countermeasure. Then take countermeasure. Out of sense of concern on their well-being, long run. So then appropriate sort of measure to stop their wrongdoing. Clear. So, and then the countermeasure take while your mind is very clear, uh, no sort of, so that, so sort of calm, no sort of agitative mind, then your countermeasure may become more effective. <laughs> person who lost, uh, I, said, I mean, person who take countermeasure, himself or herself also lost temper, right? lose temper. No. And then anger comes. The best part of our brain, which can judge right and wrong, that will not function properly because too much anger really biased our, our mind. So biased mind will not see objectively about the reality. So therefore, certain countermeasure take during your mind too much agitated, then this countermeasure, I think even government level, sometimes it happened. <laughs> so such sort of measure, uh, maybe it's a very good motivation, or a very good sort of city goal, but they, you see, when they take it, when they decide this such a sort of policy, a little bit, I say, negative emotion. So often uh, goes wrong. Unexpected cons negative consequences happen. Because at the moment the decision take, their mind a little bit biased. So you see, cannot see the things objectively. So therefore, even if it's a strong countermeasure, so try to bring where, court, where, court, or eventually some kind of the, that sentence I feel too too extreme, uh, but lifelong sort of prison where, uh, prison sentence. I think if necessary, you see, we can we can approach it that way, uh, but realistically, calmly. So countermeasure without anger, more compassionate attitude, countermeasure may become more effective. Okay. And certainly, the appropriate countermeasure uh, with sense of genuine concern of their well-being, troublemakers' well-being, I think more people support you. Clear? I think lawyer, I think honest lawyer, Definitely support that, isn't it? <laughs> if lawyer himself or herself a little bit so different, then only money <laughs> or political pressure. That is something different. <laughs> so therefore, you see, uh, 
the, now here, you see, you should not think a uh, compassionate person or compassion is signs of weakness. You should not think that. Then secondly, uh, you see, you practice a sort of compassion, uh, then you will, you will be looser because more people take advantage. No. You see, you look at the situation. If someone takes advantage on you unjustly, you can take because a firm stand without losing anger. Clear? That's actually the very sort of powerful practice of forgiveness. In spite of their wrongdoing, not lose anger, hatred. But according to the reality, if appropriate countermeasure necessary, take the countermeasure without losing compassion about that person. Clear? Like that? Then go to what? Huh? Oh, so that's more or less answer for, for your sort of comment. Okay. Do you agree? Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> so now some further questions. These are the questions. Oh. Oh, Melvin, too hot, too You have something here. This, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Start, start. Go. <laughs> Hello, my name is Frances McGuire from St. Martha's School. My question is, looking back at yourself when you were 13, what advice would you give yourself? Oh. <laughs> One thing. <laughs> One thing is quite clear. I often used to express one my regret uh, in my sort of life. Uh, at that time, at that age, uh, at that age 10, uh, 13, 14, uh, I think best period for study. And also at that time, political situation also quite calm. In Tibet. So that's actually the best period for serious study. But I am not much interested about the study, <laughs> only, only play. So, you see, that period I really lost. So that will never repeat. So regret. Like that. So, and around 14, 15. Then I made some effort or uh, developed some interest for study, for training of mind. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You? Well, what is your age? 13. 13. 13. 13. Uh, do you prefer serious study? or play, or watch game. <laughs> <laughs> Study no. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Next question. Holiness, Camille Sears from Eastern High School. My question is, what is the activity or hobby that you enjoy that people would be surprised to learn about? <laughs> Mm. In early, in early age, I love gardening, and also 
I love uh, different toys which can move. Mechanical. Mechanical. <laughs> so when I received some toy, like train or car, or, uh, at that time, during Second World War, so it's just some toy, uh, it's a soldier. With guns. Uh, some sort of movement about yeah. gun, like that. So when I received, you see, such a sort of toy, uh, play a few moments, then open. What is the system, mechanics of the system, inside? Uh, so that I always do. I think that I think very helpful to eventually to develop keen interest about technology and science. So uh, sometimes my sci scientific sort of, uh, I mean science friend, scientist friend, Friends. you see they describe me, they, they take us a comparison. Galileo um, does not comparison. His Holiness, as some of the scientist friends um, uh, compare Galileo's uh, uh, looking through the telescope with the young Dalai Lama looking at moon through a telescope. Mm -mm. <laughs> I found moon, you see, some rocks, some mountains. Then I noticed shadow of these mountains. About after sunset, the naturally sun west, west side. West. So light comes from sun. Because of that, shadow of these mountains are uh, east and west. On the other side. Huh? Other side. So then I convinced moon have no its own light. Uh, usually, you see, we Tibet, and also even some sort of literature mentioned moon also have some its own light. light like that. So then, no longer believe that. <laughs> Actually, I saw like that. So I quite bold. Uh, one day, I invited my own two teacher, two tutor, tutor, of course. Uh, I very much respect. respect. Now, I invite uh, both of them, and I set up the, the, telescope. Uh, the telescope and invite them Please look at moon, whether there's its own light or not. Then the both uh, teacher, you see, look, then say, oh, no light. <laughs> the moons appears as a light come from other source, not moon itself. So as a young student, uh, made a little contribution for conversion of my learned two teacher's view. <laughs> so then, uh, then gradually, as I developed keen interest about science, modern science, then since now I, 40 years, I uh, start talk, meet scientists. Then, around now 30 years, we have more formal sort of organized, organized sort of seminars, conversation, uh, conversation with scientists. Very, very helpful, very helpful. Uh, I think young sort of student, mainly four fields, cosmology, uh, Neurobiology, then physics, subatomic physics, and particularly quantum physics, then psychology. These four fields, we have so common sort of common ground or common field. No. So, the scientists, their sort of explanation, or on the basis of their actual finding, out of research, really convincing. Very authentic, very helpful to us. And as far as, I mean, uh, as far as sort of mind is concerned, psychology, these things, the ancient Indian psychology, including Buddhist psychology, much advanced than modern psychology. So compare ancient Indian sort of uh, knowledge about mind and emotion 
the Western knowledge is something like kindergarten. So, therefore, scientists, many scientists, after our sort of discussion, and gradually, they're really showing genuine eagerness to learn from these ancient sort of that has knowledge about emotion, about mind. So cooperation is really mutual benefit. I think recent some sort of ins some sort of the scientists uh, they also now carry some sort of experiment in their own concern area. I say what is what effect a certain sort of training their mind. So they carry a sort of essay experiment. So result, very, very convincing, wonderful. So all these development uh, as a result of our collaboration. collaboration, our collaboration, like that. So, uh, so when we met as a scientist, they consider me as a science, scientist, like that. We never discuss about next life or some other sort of the philosophical sort of matter. We simply, you see, discussing what's our emotion, what's the system of this emotion, and how to deal with this emotion, like that. And then uh, quantum physics is concerned, quantum physics is concerned. In India, last 2,000 years, this concept already there. So these things are very, very interesting to further to have that serious discussion of these things. So uh, as a result of the last uh, 30 years of our sort of work, now a Tibetan monastic institution in India, now last year formally decided one of the sort of subjects in their study uh, should include science. So we formally decided like that. Thank you. So that may be a little surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chance of has surprise you, Maria. I think some of you uh, may find a little sort of strange, right? yeah, yeah. strange. Uh, people you see, usually get the sort of, oh, uh, many years ago, I met one Chinese student uh, who studied America. Uh, I think Emory University, yeah, many years ago. So one, this is Chinese, he said, told me, Chinese student, told me while he was in Tibet, uh, while he was in China, uh, uh, he got the impression that Dalai Lama, oh, as a holy person, and old, uh, what's that? They were tall. Um, um, very conservative, uh, old-fashioned. Oh, 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 old, sort of conservative, more rigid sort of, uh, yeah. Like that, he felt as a, he get that kind of, sort of impression, impression, Mare. Yeah, he had that kind of views. And after he uh, attended my talk, and he found that I'm not like that. <laughs> so then he tried to meet me personally, and we met, like that. Is some people when you see when you heard name of the Lama of Tibet. Tibet uh, is mysterious land, like third eye, or these things. <laughs> so sometimes people may a little bit of surprise, isn't it? <laughs> yes, next question. Thank you. Oh. I'm Ann Barry from the DePaul School. What are practices that you use that could help American youth to calm themselves down when they get angry? That's a difficult, it's a difficult question. Uh, emotion, uh, destructive, usually we call destructive emotion. 
or afflicted emotion, such as anger, jealousy. You see, these uh, much depend on basic your mental sort of situation. If your basic sort of mental attitude calm, then much easier to deal when anger come. But basic sort of mental state is something uh, turbulent. Uh, turbulent, something sort of easily to, I mean, not very firm sort of calm. Then uh, easily get agitation. Uh, so then uh, uh, such people, I think, more difficult to, to control or to deal with anger. So therefore, I think, uh, like bot healthy body, mm. uh, in order to deal with illness, certain illness, basically, you should build your body, more healthy body, immune like immune system. Then virus, these uh, will not create much problem, even so some sort of illness come. Uh, 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 not that very, uh, very, very, very serious. Uh, and then recover very rapidly. So, so basic body sort of element, healthy body, is the best way to prevent or to deal with illness. So similarly, uh, I usually used to call hygiene of physical and hygiene of emotion. So once you see your basic mental thinking is calm, stable, then some angers, uh, some uh, causes about to develop anger, then much easier to deal. So I think uh, I may sort of, sort of answer or respond to you. Uh, the, is it better, you see, to deal with sort of basic or calmness of our mind, which I already mentioned. More compassionate attitude, that I already explained, gain more, or increase more inner strength, more self-confidence, less, uh, the reduce fear, and uh, reduce distrust, these things. Then anger come very weak and remain short. Like that. So that I, I prefer, you see, to deal basic mental state, calmness of mental state. Clear. Then easy thing, perhaps avoid meeting such sort of other individuals. Uh, so, so such individuals. That cause anger, yeah. Okay. That that cause you anger uh, in you. Then perhaps I think not much sort of uh, effect, uh, but you see, temporary, sometimes you see uh, some helpful if you get some kind of sort of mental agitation. Then forget, you see, that point, then just you see, concentrate your breathing. 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 Say 20 times or 30 times, just think about breathing. The intensity of that agitation reduce. You can, you can experiment. You can exper as a yeah, experiment. Experiment. Like that. Thank in, you. In, in order to carry that, you're... You need to clear nostrils. <laughs> uh, so, sometimes I jokingly tell people, sometimes my, you say, this, this nose, there's a slight kind of defect inside this oh. left nostril. So you see, sometimes you see, difficult to breathing. So sometimes I jokingly telling people, I need some kind of new hole here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Charnay Anderson from Butler Traditional High School. Your Holiness, here in our city, we have experienced a lot of violence among our youth. 
What message would you send to the youth of this city about how to live in peace and harmony? Uh, actually, this is not only your own case. I think in many parts of the world, that problem there. So now, perhaps, uh, I think relevant to, to mention here, uh, the very existing uh, education system is uh, not sufficient to pay attention and study about our emotion. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you see, these uh, positive emotions uh, actually should not consider as a sort of a religious sort of practice. So, if the moral principles based on religious faith, then complication there. The uh, multi religious community, or including non believer, then a little bit difficult. So, in, now here, India, the thousand years, a concept of uh, secular. See, according to Indian understanding, secular does not mean a little bit negative towards religion, not at all. But rather, secular means respect all religions and also respect non believer. Uh, look, India, very religious minded sort of nation. Whether they are serious or not, there's some question. Otherwise, you see, the whole sort of people, majority of the people are very much religious minded. Uh, their constitution, when 1947 they got independence, their constitution based on secular concept, secularism, like that. So, such a religious sort of people, their constitution based on secular concept. If secular means something uh, negative to religion, then impossible. So therefore, uh, the secular, uh, like India, multi-religious community, uh, so therefore, secular is respect to all religion. That's very fit. So now, uh, education, basically secular education. So, it very much related with secular ethics. If based on religious faith, then little complication. So, without religion, without because based on religious sort of concept, the just teach uh, the importance of, as I mentioned earlier, hygiene of our emotion. Similarly, hygiene of our physical. That I think uh, we are trying now. Some, uh, some scientist, because of the, uh, our friend, no. is some uh, scientist, some educationist, already now working on that. And India also, you see, in India also, you see, we are working that. So eventually, an existing modern education system, education field, some moral teachings, strictly based on secular way. That could be, I think, the more effective to change the society. At least, you see, the past, past or the, the, the existing sort of society, that's the result of our previous sort of education system. But now, if we seriously think about the education, system, education field, some sort of teaching of moral ethics without relying on religious faith, that can be, I think, some effect to coming generation, I think, including you, I think. Otherwise, with this crisis everywhere, everywhere. You see, the people, the very life, 
very sort of way of lifestyle, only money, only material value. Oh. As, as the other one which you mentioned, the moral, these ethics are sometimes you feel uh, not much related with uh, money making, well, making money, like that. So therefore, I think that's fundamental sort of concept or attitude, you see, I think need to change, not by force, not government regulation, but through education, through awareness. So the uh, education, I think, should be more complete, taking care about material development and equally taking care about more as of the Inner mental sort of yeah. Mental because of the proper sort of development that include moral ethics. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So it is, oh, it is very helpful to realize there are some some problems. Uh, that's I think very very important. If we take oh, us is everything wonderful then uh, we'll not develop some kind of question. We'll not develop, so try to because of find solutions. Try to find a solution. It is very, very essential to know something lacking, something wrong. Clear. Yes, next question. Hello, my name is Isaac Cressy, and I am from the Gatton Academy. Uh, Your Holiness, how do you think that the age of technology and computers has influenced the way that we connect with others and our ability to reach inner peace? I think it much depends on the user. If the user has some sort of that, uh, already some experience or some knowledge, then I don't think it's much, much harmful. But because of that, making new friend, I found some marriage, you see, from the internet and machine, in marriage I used to have. I have met people who have, um, you know, um, who have become, who have married as a result of first meeting uh, in, on the web. <laughs> so, not necessarily, you see, physical reach there, but through this technology, you see, you know each other, then one week, one month, one year, then develop trust and interest or love, then marry. So, not necessarily something, Kasuda. Please hold us the marry. So the technology not necessarily can pull us apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have some experience there? <laughs> you have one person's physical here in America, one person's physical in India or China, and then through these things, then become a very close friend, then eventually somewhere marry. Like that. This I feel. So, much depends on user. User have some sort of what's the yeah, of that. Uh, appreciation of the values. Oh. We now hear education, knowledge, the three levels, according to Buddhist, I think according to ancient, ancient Indian sort of stuff, as of that, thinking. <laughs> the one level of knowledge is just copy. Uh, Information information from books, from lecture, from explanation, from teacher. That knowledge, uh, not much sort of sound. If one day get some sort of information from this side, the next day from a different view, from another side, then you may confuse. So that knowledge, on the basis of that knowledge, knowledge of hearing, on that basis, now contemplate. Yeah. Uh, critically reflect. Crit critically. Reflect. Reflect that thing, that by yourself, and try to get uh, 
different sources as much as possible. Then analyze by yourself. Then you, see, you get some kind of clear awareness or conviction. Now this is right. This is the truth. Then another different source come. Or you, you, will, you, you will feel, oh, this is something different sort of explanation, but I already analyzed very seriously, very critically, now this is true. So that knowledge is really, because of that, Stable, no? deeply rooted no. in your mind. Then familiarize with that knowledge. Uh, so you use computer or this information, but just to believe what the, the information say. Think more, analyze more. Uh, I think computer mission never be because of the mid-level um, Computer can never really uh, replace a critical human thinking. Mm -hmm. So the, the, these computers, these machines, are sort of the servant of our brain. Eight. Our brain is really the supreme master. master. So totally relying on mission. Then our, our brain, no work. It is wrong. It is pity. You must sort of utilize you see, your brain. So always you see, look television, uh, hours, hours, hours. Sometimes I think spoil ability of thinking power. Clear. So get information, very helpful, very useful. Then think yourself more. Clear. Thank you. Good morning, Your Holiness. Uh, I'm Daniel Stegeman from Louisville Collegiate School. And I want to know, how would one create a peaceful life weighted with the stress of high academic standards and rigorous sports schedules? Tell us how we do not peace comes out. I think again, again I mentioned before, and then, then also is the type of sort of what's the day, uh, I mean the causes which bring stress. stress. That also is differences. If something noble, something really valuable, a goal, no? valuable goal, something sort of benefit, beneficial to others and oneself, then some sort of anxiety, some stress is good. Bring more energy more effort. That's good. Uh, but then usually, I think again, you see, basically, you see, the attitude, the, or say, the material sort of the values, including sports, or money, or fame, these things, uh, uh, be essentially materialistic sort of thing. Uh, then too much stress, or oh, you may not agree, <laughs> I feel uh, that's quite wasteful. <laughs> so material value, uh, material sort of has the facility, need, but at the same time, we should not become slave of money. Uh, money should bring peace of mind or comfortable mind. Too much worry due to money is opposite. So if you again it's a, um, a one's own state of mind, if one your body, speech, mind totally dedicated for money. Wrong. Money should be serve comfort, mental comfort, or physical comfort, like that. So, it is, so that education is not So again, uh, we come back to the, uh, the role of education and how the youngsters are educated. 
That's my view. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good morning, Your Holiness. I'm Rebecca Sauer from Presentation Academy. What is the greatest obstacle you have faced so far on your journey to promote peace and preserve the Tibetan culture? Peace. I think peace in global level or greater the world level. Uh, the greater way. Uh, thing, then I think I feel ignorance. I really feel ignorance and short sighted. Short-sighted way. Short-sighted. So one of my commitments is promotion of human value and also promotion of religious harmony. In these two fields, I think the real obstacle is lack of knowledge, lack of short-sightedness, lack of holistic. So I always try to uh, explain. Then, about Tibet, no, Tibet I think again, again, the same thing is to try to educate other people about the value of the Tibetan culture, because if we people don't appreciate the value, then what is the, they don't see the point of protecting it and preserving it. You see some Tibetan, actually you see some uh, good student and very good sort of potential become scholar. Sometimes they stop their study and illegally immigrate to the United States making money. <laughs> what <they? laughs> so quite large number of Tibetan who illegally immigrant to Europe and America, these people not for preservation of Tibetan culture, but just a seeking American dollar or European euro. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Maya Huber, and I'm from Louisville Collegiate School. Um, so at my school, we have four cornerstones, honor, responsibility, respect, and compassion. These are all very important. So why do you think compassion is the most important? Uh, honor, honor. Do you think the, in the past history some individual become hero uh, out of killing thousands, thousands of people or enemy soldier, enemy people? Do you think that's honor? No. Uh, I think those of the people, you see, consider honor, just honor. I think sometimes, you see, the, uh, when we have lack of compassion, lack of sense of concern of other human brothers, sisters, uh, we develop strong sort of barrier, we and they. And then concept of violence is develop. War means mobilized violence, and in some cases, legalized violence. So the people who, who sort of kill thousands of people, sometimes we, we call hero and great honor. Honor is good. So that, I don't think positive. Value, no. Uh, so honor, 
again responsibility. I think those soldiers, those sort of marshals, field marshals, I think they really fulfilled their responsibility to defeat the enemy. I think the what a scientist who who made nuclear weapon, nuclear bomb. I remember. Oh, oh, oh yes, oh, 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 like that. Yeah. Mm. I think his own sort of knowledge is wonderful, but then used for destruction. So responsibility, again related with some other thing. Respect also. Just to see respect or admire those billionaires. I don't think something Kasoda, something necessarily good. You yourself and try to become billionaire. What use? <laughs> so therefore now, honor, responsibility, respect, whether these become positive or negative, depend on compassion. So compassion is more important. Um, my name is Imani Burns. I'm from Wagner High School. And my question is, what is fear to you, and have you ever experienced it? Fear. Uh, one time, uh, I, I uh, one small dog bite. Uh, bit me, no. bit me. Bit me. Bit me. Then later, it's just someone told me that dog is a mad dog. So some fear. <laughs> <laughs> I may, the Dalai Lama may become mad person. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a such things. Of course, you see, it's something I usually use telling people. Practice of compassion is very important. But when one mad dog approaches to you, then it is wrong. It is silly to say, oh, compassion, compassion. <laughs> oh. You must take the appropriate action. Oh. Like that. So therefore, sometimes you see fear like that. It's necessary. Oh, protect yourself. Uh, then, of course, fear of Holocaust. When I visit Poland, the Kasa. Auschwitz. Odi, Odi. Auschwitz. I had opportunity to visit the, uh, I said the Kasa. Concentration camp. Concentration. The concentration camp, uh, particularly the Kasa. The furnace. No. A furnace where you see people burned. I visit there. Oh. And then explanation, explain, explain the thousands of people burned there. And then another room, another little bit hall. I was told there's the kaza. The shower room. Or shower. So this, then, then also you see, uh, explanation by expert. Today's nuclear sort of weapon, which we preserved, if this is a weapon used, then Zamuli talking sumshi degrees. The experts tell us if we were to use the, the weapons at our disposal, the nuclear weapons, uh, we have the capacity to destroy, destroy the world several times over. Oh, at least three, four times. <laughs> Unthinkable. Unthinkable. Then also the other day in Wisconsin, one sort of expert that is loved. His Holiness is referring to a recent panel discussion um, on environment and ethics at University of uh, Wisconsin Madison. One of the environmental experts uh, 
um, informed the audience that um, just recently, he was one of the co-winners of the Nobel Peace Prize as one of the lead authors for the climate change report. Um, and he mentioned that uh, just recently we have um, crossed a major threshold, which is the carbon emission of uh, 400 per million. Um, and he mentioned that if we were to cross 450 per parts per million, then it would be really da dangerous. So this is a question of survival of entire humanity. Uh, these are really very serious. So when we listen, you see these explanations by experts who really concentrate or research this work, uh, and then you get real sort of, sort of fear or anxiety. So we, uh, if there is possibility to overcome this, then we must do something. So fear, there are two types of fear. Fear just due to mental projection. That use intelligence and analyze the reality. Uh, so the mental projected sort of fear is through analyzation will reduce. Uh, some fear is really because of sufficient reasons. Then that fear is helpful to, to take precaution uh, to motivate, to motivate this precaution and also making effort to avoid these sort of dangers or these sort of what's this, because of that? Dangers, uh, like dangers like that. So, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Your Holiness, nine months ago, Youth Engaging Compassion was formed in anticipation of your visit. Our aspiration is to assist youth in deepening their understanding of compassion. To begin, we invited all of Louisville schools to create their own compassionate resolutions. As of today, the Archdiocese schools have stated a proclamation of compassion, seven independent schools, and astoundingly, all 150 of Jefferson County public schools have a compassionate resolution hanging in their hallways. Very good, wonderful. <laughs> Our website, youthengagingcompassion.org, offers a bouquet of over 60 compassionate lesson plans for kindergarten through, grades, through grade 12, as well as showcasing students' compassionate-based projects, artwork, and videos. Youth Ambassadors for Compassion is a new program formed in partnership with the Muhammad Ali Center with representatives from grades 9 through 12, these young leaders strive to connect to their communities by influencing others with powers of compassion. In reality, our Louisville students have really taken off on their own. Building the first LEAD standard Habitat for Humanity house, paying witness to indigent burials, and recently painting sky gardens with giant red hearts of compassion in school parking lots, which can be viewed from airplanes and satellites, are but a few examples of these students' compassionate energy. Very good, very good. It would be, <laughs> it would be fair to say, using today's language, here among our youth in Louisville, that compassion has gone viral. I remember one time, in, I think, Canada, uh, you see, they carry some sort of movement or some practice. The student uh, go to those family which was in the poor condition, and also sometimes, you see, the old parent uh, and ch ch children go to the school, and sometimes, you see, they are washing or cleaning these things because uh, of the motivation. Right. And those who are not able to do this themselves. Uh, so some student, you see, go such sort of uh, families and helping, serving. Uh, of course, not, not all time, but you see, 
once a week, something like that. Volunteer, no? A volunteer basis. That also, I, th I think, very good. You see, implement our sense of concern, our sense of sort of uh, concern of others' well-being. Then also, you see, uh, when you uh, visit, you see, the poor family, a difficult family, I think like the victims of, of this sort of city. The uh, some of the sort of the places, uh, places, poor family, I think you get more sort of experience. And then that is the really, uh, not just to talk about compassion, value of compassion, but implement that. That also, I think, I think useful, gain some experience. Your Holiness, your visit to Louisville has inspired us in ways we have yet to fully realize. Your qualities of love, compassion, equanimity, and joy are beacons of encouragement in a world that at times feels full of strife. Your, what you represent, Your Holiness, to each of us in this room is an exemplary example of the goodness within each of us and hope for our world. As a heartfelt offering and thank you from our city's youth, 108 of the, our students' questions are bound with love and a heartfelt wish that you will keep us in your heart so that we may all benefit beings with great compassion. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind. Now, perhaps I think uh, within the next, I think, one year or two, maybe we are ready to develop a curriculum. Curriculum about sort of, uh, compassion. Not just one word compassion or some explanation about the importance of compassion, but whole map, I mean, map of whole emotion, whole mind. Then, more sort of, uh, identify, identify uh, this kind of emotion when we develop, disturb our mind. This emotion comes more, uh, more sort of benefit, even physically. They use some scientific sort of research. Then, uh, once the people or student develop interest uh, according to their own sort of experience, then more explanation how to deal with this destructive emotion. Uh, not talking about any religious sort of thing, simply dealing with our emotions. So in order to deal emotion effectively uh, or logically, we should have fuller knowledge about map of mind. So that we already now thinking with full cooperation of some university professors or scientists like that. So once I think that, uh, ready, uh, that is ready, then I think some school, I think uh, carry, Experiment. use, you see, these sort of new text. And then we'll see what is the result, what's the effect, say, uh, one year, two years. If you see that really some benefit, then extend further 10 schools or 100 schools or 1,000 schools like that. So now time comes. We must work something, isn't it? So I very much appreciate all your sort of effort out of your long-sighted way. It's very, very uh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sit down. Okay. Start. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. 
<laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Sierra Hanks from Atherton High School, and I'd like to discuss compassion with all of you. I've noticed a rather troubling modern movement to look down on compassion, to call compassionate people naive or to resign the word to the bleeding hearts who we then toss away as idealistic. We're old enough. We've seen the atrocious things people do to each other. It seems so much safer to be a cynic. To believe in human compassion makes us feel like foolish children. It scares us. And how terrible that empathy is seen as childish while cynicism seems the safer path? At times, I must admit, I too have hardened my heart in protection, but I still believe in a compassionate future for our world. And that future begins with all of us. We aren't foolish for caring, we're human. And compassion is part of being human. Buddhists and Jews attribute this to the singularity or oneness of our existence. Christians have a compassionate example in Jesus. Muslims learn through the fasting of Ramadan to empathize with the often constant hunger pangs of others. But beyond that, at the biological human level, we are compassionate. Scientists have found through the study of oxytocin in the brain that we're hardwired to be. In respect to context, there's a common misconception that since Buddhism accepts that reality, in reality there is suffering and isolation aids in the reaching of enlightenment, that Buddhism doesn't promote interpersonal compassion. I've found this to be false. In traditional and modern Buddhist thought, the only thing higher than pursuing one's own enlightenment is helping another on their path to enlightenment. It can be simply said that shared suffering is lessened while shared joy increased. And so, this is my challenge to you, my friends. Don't be ashamed of being compassionate. Strive to help others reach their full potential on your path to realizing your own. Thank you. Sometimes uh, in the room, air conditioned. Sometimes you see bad for a nose like that. Mm. <coughs> uh, so, the, of course, you see, the practitioner himself, herself, you see, as soon as some kind of warm feeling of other and concern of others' well-being there, that uh, automatically reduce the desire to harming other, or desire to exploit other, desire to uh, say, cheating other, because you respect them. You, you, you actually voluntarily take concern of their well-being. As a result, your trust with respect automatically comes. So that brings inner strength, self-confidence, reduced fear. Such practitioner, no possible loneliness feeling. Rest of uh, community. I always telling. Seven billion human beings are actually human brothers, sisters. I always telling people, I myself also practice oneness of humanity. So everywhere, new place. It's the first time meeting, but I feel, oh, another human being. No differences. So with that kind of attitude, uh, I myself used to get immense as they benefit. And then others also. See, obviously, others also human beings. Uh, if you show them sincere feeling, honest, open, they also, even I met a number of cases, some people at the initially, a little bit reserved remain a little bit distance. And I always see dealing with these people as a human brother, sisters. No formality, no sort of distance feeling. 
So, within a few minutes, then their attitude also changed. So, result, they also become much happier. Uh, so, that's the way to create happy community, happy family. So, one's individual seriously sort of carry the uh, purse of the mother of the farm, farming sort of state family. But very warm-hearted person. So when I was young, I was the youngest child. So I received, at that time, I received maximum sort of state affection from my mother. Perhaps some of my uh, elder brother, sisters may have some jealousy, maybe. <laughs> so, so in any way, uh, so dear to me, right, my mother, uh, very kind. And then myself also is very, very dear, my mother. So as is a religious sort of children, ch child, no sort of toys or these things, of course, because I have video games, these things, <laughs> not there. So, uh, uh, daytime, I carry uh, by my mother on her shoulder, and when she sort of farming work, work in, the, in farm land, now, you see she worked that way, she always carry me. So then, uh, when go different places, and I hold, I hold, you see, my mother's do here. Hmm. I want to go this side. I do this. <laughs> if I want to go this side, go like that. If my, if my mother uh, didn't listen my wish, then I shout. And then go bang, 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 re. My leg, no, my leg, uh, kick, kick uh, uh, on my mother, like that. So, I'm quite sure. Uh, later, uh, through training, uh, the training about compassion, these things, I found, I found very easy because I feel the real seed of compassion uh, cultivated by my mother. Clear. So these are biological factors. Just one thing. Then, uh, uh, the practitioner, of course, as soon as sort of, sort of the uh, inner sort of warm feeling here, mainly, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> you should say, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for your hug. Hmm? Thank you for your hug. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, nothing. Do not share. I think I prefer. There's another one. Talk by stand. Right. <coughs> I appreciate. Your or today, a comment, uh, excellent. Uh, uh, it is very true. Some sometimes the people, firstly, uh, the concept, sort of warm-heartedness or compassion, forgiveness. You see, these things uh, consider. Uh, part of religious practice. So, those people who have not much interest about religion, even you see those people who are supposed to believe, but not, not seriously implement what they believe, then you see these usually you see neglect about practice of these things. 
so these, of course, all religious tradition carry the practice of these things and also use philosophical sort of what is it, backing. Mm. Uh, however, these practice, these things are actually biologically, we need these things. Firstly, we born from our mother. At the initial sort of few years, we can't stand it. Or we can't sort of we can't sort of look after oneself. Entirely depend on others' affection or other sort of care. Even animal like that. So mentally, emotionally, we equipped by biological factor. This is some kind of uh, cherishing way or love or affection. So that's our way, our life start that way. I think here, yeah, you see those children uh, who have, uh, who received, I think, uh, the maximum affection from their mother. I think today, such people have deep insight, uh, more sort of strength, more self-confidence and ready to show affection to others. Then those people who receive less affection from our mother or from our friend, and sometimes neglect child, just give food, that nothing. Such people who experience in early period that kind of thing or worst thing, bully, abuse. Then these people, no matter how successful, but in deep insight, some sense of insecurity, sense of fear, that automatically brings some kind of distrust to other people. Uh, so, uh, very difficult to find trusted friend. Finally, become lonely person. Lonely is where, in, in mental level, lonely. And then depression. Then their best sort of friend is alcohol or drug. <laughs> Since you see, uh, nobody they can trust. So only perhaps, I think, some pets dogs or cats, and then the bottle of alcohol. <laughs> and they eventually ruined their own physical, very clear. Uh, then, uh, so therefore, we should not consider these values as something, uh, religious sort of values, uh, who have no interest in our religion because uh, of the neglect of all these things is totally wrong. Then, another thing, uh, practice compassion is good for practitioner himself or herself, but not necessarily, you see, helping other. That also a great mistake. I think firstly, my own sort of story. Uh, my mother, farmer, uh, illiterate, uh, uneducated, uneducated, poor, uh, 